I prepared this for Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. A few days ago, I had the opportunity to see Rabbi Chatzko Freundlich, a dear friend and respected colleague. I needed to speak to him about something, so I walked over to his home. We spoke for a few minutes outside, and then when we finished, he told me the following insight, which I think is so important. I want to share it with you. It's an insight to a very strange line in the Talmud that occurred in the Dafyomi several days ago. The Talmud says as follows. Amr of Hanan Bar Papa. Rabbi Hanan Bar Papa says, Kol she'ein yayin nishpach besoch beso kemayim, any house that does not have wine flowing like water, eno bichlal bracha, is not considered a home that has a blessing. Strange line. Rashi gives the following interpretation. Rashi understands that this means that when a host is able to pour wine freely, to serve wine, which is expensive, freely, as if it was water, that is a sign that there is a real blessing of wealth in that home. Rashi says, Lo higia lesov bracha gemura. If a person has not reached the level of material wealth, that they are able to treat expensive wine, serving it like water, they have not reached the complete blessing of wealth even if a person is somewhat wealthy or has a lot of different possessions, but unless you reach this level, you have not really reached the level of being blessed by wealth. That's what Rashi says. That Rashi is the source of the custom that you may have seen, maybe you even practice it, that when we pour the wine into the cup for Havdalah at the end of Shabbos, we pour it so that it overflows. Hopefully there's a plate underneath. But it overflows. And we do that, those who do that, do it based on this line in the Talmud according to Rashi's understanding that we are asking God for this blessing. So we are pouring the wine into our cup to abundance, to overflowing, hoping that that will help us to merit the promise of plenty that God indicates in this passage in the Talmud. The Taz, one of the classic commentators to the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, says that cannot be the understanding of this line in the Talmud. That practice cannot be a positive practice because there is a prohibition in Jewish law called baltashchis. We are not allowed to waste anything. Specifically, we're not allowed to waste good food or drink, to pour wine and have it overflow to spill, and we're not going to drink that. That's wasting. It's wasteful. And therefore, besides the fact that it makes a mess, and therefore... It cannot possibly be that the Talmud is saying that it's a good thing to pour wine to overflowing like it was water. <coughs> Mishnah Bura also says that this is not the correct practice at Havdalah. We should not we should never be pouring so much wine into a cup that intentionally we're causing it to overflow and waste. Rather, the Taz has a different interpretation of this line, a completely different interpretation. He interprets it as follows. Kol she'ein yayin nishpach besoch beso kamayim, eno b'chlal bracha. If you live in a home and wine is spilled accidentally and it is not treated 
as if expensive wine was spilled. It's not treated like wine that could cause stains and maybe ruin something when it is spilled, but rather it's treated by the members of the family as if it was just water that spilled. There was no great loss. Nothing got ruined. It's okay. It's not a big deal. That's a sign that the house has a blessing. Sometimes wine spills. In some homes, other members of the family might get angry, might get upset. There might be raised voices. There might be harsh words. That's not the right thing. Shalom bias to preserve harmony within the home means that if something like wine spills, we should consider it as if it was just water and respond accordingly with forgiveness, with understanding, with patience, with calm. That is the true sign that there is blessing in the home. My friends, I want to wish you all a great day, and I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.